Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now start with the fifth kingdom that is Animalia. So as the name says Animalia, so it is going to talk about the different varieties of animals existing on this planet. So now just look at this uh, picture. You can see so many different varieties of animals here, right? So in this uh, kingdom, we are going to talking. To, we are going to talk about all different kinds of animals, including human beings. So you can just have a look that how many so there are so many different varieties of animals which exist, and that too they even though we have grouped them under the same category or the same kingdom, but they all are not exactly the similar. Right, because even they have a lot of dissimilarities amongst themselves. For example, fishes. If you compare a fish and a man and a cat, do you think that they have a lot of resemblance with each other? Well, they do not have a lot of resemblance, but they have some basic resemblance with each other. Since they have too many dissimilarities as well, that is why subclassification of this kingdom was also necessary. So let us first quickly look at the characteristics of this kingdom. They are again eukaryotes that is they have specific membrane bound organelles and a distinct nucleus. They are obviously multicellular made up of many cells. They are heterotrophic that is they cannot prepare their own food and they depend on others for their food. Mostly mobile. They are a, capable of moving from one place to another. Now, how they move, that again depends from, varies from animal to animal. Cell walls are absent in cells. So, it is very, it is unlike to the plant kingdom. In plant kingdom, cell walls were present, but in this kingdom, there is no cell wall in, in the cell. It is a diverse group with over 2 million species. So just imagine how many varieties of living organisms exist under this uh, kingdom. So it is a very diverse group. It has got a large variety with over 2 million of species. And that is why we actually need subclassification of this kingdom. So let us now see what forms the basis of subclassification of the kingdom Animalia. On what basis do we classify it into further groups? So the basis of classification here is body differentiation and design. So similar to the Plantae kingdom. In Plantae also, we took one basic characteristic as the plant body differentiation. So here also, we will look at the body differentiation and design. So what do we mean by body differentiation? The same thing, I explained it before also, that the basic unit of body is cell. So these cell can form together tissue, tissues can form organs, organs can form organ system and the organ system together can form the organism. Right? So, but now again it depends. It is not necessary that in all the organisms in this Animalia group, uh, the the organ systems will be present. There are animals who will have things only at cellular level. There are not even tissues. There, are, there will be animals where there will be tissues but no organs. So depending upon that, we have classified them. So it is classified into 10 subclasses. Large number of classes, right? But that's how it is because it is such a diverse group that we had to divide it into 10 subclasses. So what are those classes? Porifera. Cylentrata, Platyhelminths, Nematodes, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Protocordata, and Vertebrata. So these are the 10 subclasses into which the kingdom Animalia is divided. Now as we go ahead, so even in these classes, as we start with Porifera, we will see that they are one of the oldest forms. So as we go ahead with Cylentreta, Platyhelminths, Nematodes, Annelids, we will see that there will be complexity in the structure. The structure keep on becoming complex. And finally, when we reach Vertebrates, we will see that the structure is really, really complex. And there we can see ourselves. That means human beings will fall under this category of vertebrates. So as we go ahead, things will keep on becoming complex. Right? <clears throat> so 
now you understand that on the basis of body differentiation and design so not only differentiation which i spoke about just now design is also important because if you see there are if you compare a human being with an insect the body design is completely different right so based on all those stuff the, these 10 subclasses classification was actually done so now we are going to talk about each of these subclasses in detail one by one thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again